In this video, we are going to talk about top 10 best place to visit in Vatican. So before starting this video, please like this video, and subscribe to our channel for the future updates. With a surface size of 0.44 square kilometers, the Vatican is the world's tiniest country. It is a historical continuation of the papal country and a unique sort of Caesaropapism. The aesthetic and holy colors of the Vatican are remarkable. From the central dome of the St. Petersburg Cathedral, you can see the entire church and a panoramic view of Rome. It is said to be the closest spot on earth to heaven, despite the fact that the Vatican's mausoleum is just below the cathedral, which is a startling contrast. Even though it is the smallest country in the world, there is enough to see and do in Vatican. Vatican City is the world's smallest sovereign state, at about 44 hectares. Although it barely has a population of 1,000 people, thousands of people pass through its gates every day, indicating that there is enough to do and see inside. Here's a list of the top 10 best place to visit in Vatican. Let's start. Number 10. Collection of Modern Religious Art. A more recent addition to the Vatican Treasures was launched in 1973, as a consequence of an initiative by Pope Paul VI in 1964, among all the antiquities and Renaissance art. The Pope acknowledged the chasm that exists between the Catholic Church and contemporary art, and expressed his desire to bridge that gap in the future. The Vatican's tiny collection of 19th-century art was expanded to include more modern works as a result of this. Although not all of the collection, which numbers over 8,000 pieces, is on display, the works shown in galleries between the Borgia apartment and the Sistine Chapel provide an overview of 20th-century religious paintings. Salvador Dali, Vincent van Gogh, Marc Chagall, Francis Bacon, Otto Dix, Giorgio de Chirico, and Henri Matisse all have religious works in the collection. In Vence, France, Matisse's Chapel of the Rosary is given its own space. Number 9. Etruscan Museum. The Etruscan Museum, established by Pope Gregory XVI in the mid-19th century, contains 18 rooms of items that give new light on the Etruscans' lives and beliefs in the afterlife. Not only funeral artifacts, but also artworks and things from the daily lives of this fascinating people have been discovered in Etruscan graves throughout Tuscany. The grave goods discovered in the Rigolini Galassi tomb at Servateri, including the Mars of Todi, an Athena head, and a number of very beautiful Etruscan vases, are particularly noteworthy. Number 8. Vatican Gardens. The first sections of the Vatican Gardens were built in the 13th century for Pope Nicholas II as a place of quiet thought. The groomed gardens, grassy spaces, and orchards have expanded to span about half of the tiny city-sized states and rival the most exquisite gardens in Italy over the years. Visitors will find many individually potted plants along the walks, including gorgeous azaleas and other lush flowers, in addition to the traditional French garden. Several rare trees, including an Australian silk oak, as well as several trees donated as gifts by official guests, are planted amid them and in the orchard. The olive tree, which was provided by the State of Israel to represent friendly relations with the Pope, is perhaps the most notable of these trees. Garden tours must be scheduled in advance with the Vatican Museum. Number 7. Vatican Necropolis. A rich wealth of archaeological artifacts awaits underneath St. Peter's Great Dome and priceless frescoes. Many people are familiar with the papal grottoes beneath the cathedral, which contain private chapels where former popes have been entombed, as well as the 12th-century church that surrounds them. What some people don't realize is that there are enormous ruins even lower in the dirt below, revealing burial grounds dating back to the 1st century BCE. The lowest of the three floors contains a pagan burial site, while the next level contains both pagan and Christian tombs, as well as remnants going back to the 5th century, including stone crypts and arches. Number 6. Museo Pio Clementino. The Vatican museums have the world's biggest collection of ancient sculpture, with the majority of it on display in the methodical arrangement devised by Popes Clement XIV and Pius VI between 1769 and 1799. There are so many wonderful and noteworthy pieces in these galleries that even a list of the highlights would be lengthy. The red porphyry sarcophagi of Constantine's daughter, Constantia, and his mother, Saint Helen, both elaborately painted with images and symbols, may be found in the Sala a Croce Greca. Look for Belvedere Torso in the Sala della Muse, a work by Apollonius of Athens from the 1st century BC that Michelangelo adored. 
A mosaic floor of theatrical masks from the Villa Adriana in Tivoli may be found at the Gabinetto della Machere. Number 5. Piazza San Pietro, St. Peter's Square. Bernini designed the vast Piazza San Pietro in front of St. Peter's Basilica between 1656 and 1667 to serve as a gathering place for pilgrims from all over the world. It continues to serve that job beautifully, and it is packed to the brim on Easter Sunday and other significant occasions. The vast oval courtyard, which is 372 meters long, is surrounded on both ends by semicircular colonnades, which are topped by a railing with 140 saint sculptures. Caligula took a 25.5-meter Egyptian obelisk from Heliopolis and set it up in his circus in AD 39, and there are fountains on either side of the oval. It was transported here in 1586, a difficult task at the time given the monument's 350-ton weight. Number 4. Pinacoteca, Picture Gallery. The Pinacoteca comprises 16 rooms of precious art from the Middle Ages to contemporary works, despite Napoleon robbing it of many of its masterpieces. The photos, which are arranged in chronological sequence, provide an excellent overview of the evolution of Western art. Byzantine, Sienese, Umbrian, and Tuscan paintings, as well as a Giotto triptych and a Madonna and Saint Nicholas of Bari by Fra Angelico, are among the works on display. Filippo Lippi painted a triptych, Pinchericchio painted Coronation of the Virgin, and Perugino painted a Madonna. Raphael's comic tapestries, his Madonna of Foligno, and his famous 1517 Transfiguration are all featured in one room. Number 3. The Raphael Rooms, Appartamento Borgia, and Capella Nicolina. These rooms are decorated with a superb sequence of murals by Raphael, which were commissioned for the Palace of the Vatican's Papal Residences by the art-loving Pope Julius II and later by Pope Leo X. Raphael began an art legacy that would last for generations by rediscovering the traditions of ancient painting. He employs classical symmetry in the construction of each scene, placing the individuals in perspective around a central focal point. While several scenes were painted after his death by students or other great artists, the Stanza della Segnatura and the Stanza di Eliodoro, as well as those in the Sala della Segnatura, were all painted by Raphael himself. These pieces, together with those in the Sistine Chapel, were completed between 1508 and 1511 and represent the pinnacle of Renaissance art. Number 2. Sistine Chapel. The Pope's domestic chapel, the Sistine Chapel, is a rectangular space that is also used for worship and special occasions. The conclave to pick a Pope's successor is convened here after a Pope's death. From 1980 to 1994, the paintings on the walls and ceiling by Michelangelo and others, considered the pinnacle of Renaissance painting, were painstakingly restored, removing layers of candle soot, dust, varnish, grease, and overpainting to reveal their original dazzling colors. Large murals of biblical subjects against the backdrop of Umbrian and Tuscan landscapes, painted for Sixtus IV by the most famous artists of the day, Perugino, Botticelli, Rosselli, Pinchericchio, Signorelli, and Ghirlandaio, adorn the sidewalls. Humanism, which recognizes persons as individuals and vital in the historical process, is already shown in these late 15th-century paintings. The Old Testament scenes are on the left wall, while the New Testament scenes are on the right. Number 1. St. Peter's Basilica. The majestic St. Peter's Basilica, the centerpiece of the Vatican and one of the best sites to visit, was erected between the 16th and 18th centuries, replacing earlier structures that begun in 326 on what is supposed to be the site of St. Peter's burial. Ironically, it was the sale of indulgences to fund this construction in the 16th century that sparked Martin Luther's Protestant Reformation. The work of notable painters begins even before you enter the church. Over the main entry is a Bernini equestrian figure of Constantine and pieces of a mosaic by Giotto. It, like the double bronze doors, is from an antique church. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.